Hello, this is Mr. Bamu Itanongwene. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can turn your Microsoft Word into a calculator. And you will really like this video because there are some times as a mathematics teacher when we are in the classroom teaching, we may want to do some basic calculations, especially when we have prepared our notes using the Microsoft Word. I want to do some basic calculations and we need the children to touch the calculator. You can actually do that in your Microsoft Word here and you are good to go. Even when you are preparing your marking scheme, maybe multiple choice questions, you want to prepare the marking scheme and you need to do some calculations very fast and you don't have pen or maybe you can't solve it easily and you need a calculator, you can actually use your Microsoft Word to do your addition, your subtraction, all the necessary signs you need for your calculation so let's go straight so before i go on to show you how you can use the microsoft word as a, as a calculator all you need to have you see this thing right here in my microsoft word mathematics you need to install the microsoft mathematics and to get it just go to the description of this video you will see the link i put down there just click on the link you will get the Microsoft Mathematics installed in your system. And when you download the Microsoft Mathematics, you are going to see it something like this. Let me show you. You will see it here, Microsoft Mathematics. And when you open the folder, you are going to see the two files here. So these are the setup. You install this Microsoft Mathematics. It will install into your system. Why this MA setup? You use it to integrate Microsoft Mathematics into your Microsoft Word and with that you are good to go. So when you are through with installing it, then you, ins you integrate it into your Microsoft Word, then you can do all the calculations you need. Then after installing the Microsoft into your system, you are going to have this. You can see this, this is the Microsoft Mathematics. After installing it in your system, you it will come out like this in your desktop. Uh, when you have it like this in your desktop, you can open it. So let me open it. So as I double tap it now, so this is Microsoft Mathematics. So it's already in my system. You can actually do so many, too many things you want. You can see some functions here. You can insert matrix and the rest. You can do some other things, trigonometry, linear equations, just like that. All right. So this is Microsoft Mathematics. You can work with it as you want in this place, but what I usually do with Microsoft Mathematics more, I use it more in my Microsoft Word to make my work easy for me to do some basic calculations as I work in my classroom with my students and I'm good to go. Once again, don't forget to get this Microsoft Mathematics, go to the description of this video, click on it and download it and integrate it into your Microsoft Word and you will start from there so that is that so let's go to the first demonstration i have here how you can use the microsoft Mathematics in your system all right let's move on now in this aspect of my presentation, I'm going to show you how you can do some basic statistics calculation using the Microsoft Word. So as you keep turning your Microsoft into a calculator, your work can be sweet and easy for you as a mathematics teacher. So let's do some simple demonstration. Let's see how we can go. So as usual, you tap on your mathematics as you have integrated it in your system now into your Microsoft Word. You come to this place, you tap your equation here. All right, so you need this kind of bracket, this curly bracket. If you want to get equation, use the curly bracket like this to impute your result. So let me just impute it direct. So just go to your keyboard, open and close. Let's assume I have some set of numbers. For example, let's say 2, comma, as usual, 3, comma, 4, comma. Let's say 2 again, comma. Let's say 5, comma. Let's say 2 again, comma. 6, comma. Let's say 7, comma. Let's say 2. 
all right so this is uh, some set of numbers make sure you use the coily bracket now let's do our compute now under compute you will see the list is being highlighted calculate is always there so but this is what i want us to do so i've listed my numbers so what do i need is it to sort them out let's tap on sort and see what we want you see sort actually mean you are reading them from smallest to highest that means before you find the median you can actually do this so this is the sorting of the numbers arranging from smallest to highest all right so let me undo this okay so if i want to do other things again go to mathematics go to mathematics compute list you see you can actually find the mean of this number just tap on it so this is the mean of the numbers so you don't need to take your time adding them around just get your mean direct you can now put your equals to type your mean so mean equals to this the result is out you can still do more just go to mathematics list under list you see your median so your median is three let me leave let me go do that sorting again so that we can actually see if that mean is actually correct so let's sort out again and see if i sort out all right so mean is one two sorry this is median let's put the value for the median so this is the median not me all right let's see if the median is correct this is one two three four this is one two three four all right median is actually three three is at the middle you can see how your result is coming out clean and fine for you let's see more of the statistics tools so on that list you see you can actually find the mode so without wasting time we already know that the mode is two because two appear most so the mode is two let's see you can do more there are so many things you can do under the statistics with list so you can see list common multiple this is for lcm and acf let's leave down let's see the sum let's see the total sum now so the sum is 33 that means if you add two this is five nine ten eleven eleven plus five we have 16 17 18 plus six 24 24 plus 7 31 32 33 so the sum is actually correct so so many things you can do with your microsoft word let me delete all these okay let me just still leave them no need to rush so let's see compute more so we can actually do product i can find the product of all the numbers you can see how large the product is see how large the product is you can still do more let's see what we have there you can on that list again see we can get the maximum value so this is the range now so the range which is the highest minus the lowest you can actually do it here so seven is the highest let me use h for highest so seven is the highest let's see then the lowest is uh, that is the minimum value so that is two is the lowest let's use l for lowest so let's see what we still have on that list so you can oh, allow this you can actually find the variance of this value so the variance so the variance is this and you can actually do the standard deviation oh this is lovely see you can actually find the standard deviation which is the square root of the variance so this is standard this is standard deviation this is nice love this so this is one thing you can actually do using your microsoft Word to find some basic statistical tools you can see how lovely it is and how good you can actually do your mathematics using your microsoft Word. so this is one way you can turn your microsoft into a calculator you don't need any special calculator again as a mathematics teacher in your classroom you are good to go as a student as you are learning typing your work typing your note type preparing lesson plan lesson notes as a teacher you can be checking your result preparing marking scheme for your student
type in your marking scheme you can actually do all this get your answers and you're good to go let's demonstrate that lcm we saw the other time so all you need to do the numbers you have to look for the various values of the statistics result just use this curly bracket without the curly bracket you won't get your result because because it won't come out as a list you need a list of numbers before you can find the result so that is all you can how you can do this let me delete this let's get uh, the curly bracket again under mathematics equation let's see under this let's get our curly bracket here all right so let's have this so let's do hcf and lcm let me take a simple number so we can get the lcm let's say i need the lcm of six let's say six and twelve and for example 24. what is the lcm of six twelve and twenty four let's go to mathematics compute on that list that is the least common multiple you see the result is 24 now is the lcm See LCM of 6, 12, and 24 is um, 24. So you can actually find the LCM of numbers using this. Let's see the highest common multiple. I know that should be 6, the highest common multiple. But let's check and see what it will give to us. Under the greatest common divide and denominator. Now let's see again. Oh. Let me see how you gave it greatest what? The greatest common factor, yes. So which is also called the HCF. That is also called the HCF, the greatest common factor. So the HCF is six, the LCM is six. Just impute your numbers here. You can see as a basic a uh, school teacher, primary school teacher, you can actually find HCF and SCM of numbers. You can demonstrate it in the classroom with your student without you wasting much time. So no matter how large the numbers is, 60, let's say 30, let's say 15. I'm looking for the LCM of this number. All I just need to do, go to mathematics, under compute, under list, I will get my least common multiple. So you see the LCM is 60. So this is the LCM of this set of numbers. So this is actually nice. So if you are looking for the HCF, let's see the HCF it will give to us. Let's see the HCF of these numbers is 15. So 15 is the highest common multiple of these numbers. So this is all I have for statistics. So everything you need in statistics, they are all here. Use the curly bracket, impute your result, impute your numbers in this curly bracket, come to list. On that list, you can see different statistical results you want to find. Variance is there, standard deviation is there. And get it in your Microsoft Word and you are good to go. So this is all about my presentation on how you can find on or how you can turn your Microsoft Word into a calculator. I hope you enjoy watching this video. Um, I hope you can use it in your classroom. Don't forget once again, go to the description of this video. You will see the link. Just click on it. You will download the link where you can. You will download the soft the setup of the Microsoft Mathematics and use it anytime in your classroom. Thank you for watching my video. Do have a nice day.